Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about 20 things that you can get rid of before 2019. I know at this time of year there's a huge surge for everybody to quickly declutter and get rid of things. I know I feel that every time the seasons change actually. It's like a spring clean, um, but I get like an autumn cleaning urge as well. So I thought that as the end of the year is slowly approaching, um, we'll give ourselves a wider margin to get to the end of 2018 to get rid of a load of stuff that we just don't need and isn't serving us anymore. So if you're looking to downsize, declutter, minimize, or you're just looking to get rid of the things in your space that you don't really love or need anymore, then this is the video for you. And before further ado, let's hop right in. So number one is clothes that you haven't worn for a year or more. I know that as the seasons change, especially in climates like here in the UK, um, you don't always use all of your clothes for the whole year round. This is why a lot of people have things like the capsule wardrobe where you can store away the clothes that you haven't been wearing um, for the current season and you change them two to four times a year. However, if there is something that you haven't used um, for the past 12 months, so that's all of the season cycle, uh, you're probably not going to wear it again. For example, if you have a jumper that you didn't wear last winter, you're probably not going to wear it again this winter because you have things that you prefer to wear and that you wear more often instead. Or if you're decluttering your summer clothes, if there was a dress that you just didn't wear as much as your others, then perhaps it's time to let go of that now. Of course there are some exceptions to this rule, like occasional wear, formal clothing, or clothing that you'd wear to a spe specific event or sport, and they're taking up quite a lot of space, then perhaps it's time to rethink and perhaps assess how often you're going to these occasions, and do you really need this now? And do you really need to keep it in your home, or can you rent it when the time comes? The second thing is ill-fitting clothes, because we just know that we don't feel our best when clothes don't fit us or feel right. If you have something that's just slightly too big or slightly too small, you're probably going to feel uncomfortable wearing it and you're going to know that looking at the item and probably opt for something different and therefore wear this item a lot less. However, it probably will fit somebody else perfectly. So if you donate this item to a charity shop, then somebody else can get a lot more wear out of it. Number three is books you've read and you're not going to read again and you're not keeping them for reference. I know a lot of people feel um, a deep attachment to a lot of books because it's their favourite or it reminds them of their childhood, but if these are books that you're really not going to read again and you're not flicking through every once in a while, if they're not textbooks that you were constantly referring to, then you can keep the memories and keep loving that book, but you don't need to hold on to it anymore. Pass it on and let it become somebody else's favourite book. Number four is old documents and paperwork. Now, a lot of the time we keep paperwork for fear that we're going to need it in the future, so have a look through the paperwork and see if there are items that are even a few years old that you just haven't needed. And if you really think that you might need it, you can always scan it and keep it on your computer or a hard drive and get rid of the physical paper. Number five is duplicates. This can be pretty broad, pretty much anything that's a duplicate. Wooden spoons, spatulas, jumpers, jeans, t-shirts, if there's an item that you have multiple of and there's no real reason for it other than you just have them, then consider letting go, especially if you use one more than the others. Number six is cards, birthday, Christmas, Eater, engagement, any kind of holiday or occasion cards that you've kept onto. I see you, I know you're out there, there's people who just keep cards. Really, what are you going to do with them? If you've been keeping them for scrapbooking and you haven't, either do that now or just get rid of them. Otherwise, if they're just taking up space in a box in your attic somewhere, there's really no need and you're keeping them for the memories, but you could just keep the memories without keeping the card. And it's very unlikely that you're going in and sorting through all these cards and rereading them. Um, they're just taking up space and they're not paying enough rent. Number seven is pens that have run dry. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory. Number eight is items that you've been meaning to sell, but you just never got around to it. I know for me personally, this one can be quite tricky because there are items that I keep that are worth something that I don't need anymore, but I would like to give on to somebody else and it's worth a little bit of money, so I might as well sell it. However, sometimes they just sit in a box and I keep meaning to sell it and I keep meaning to sell it and the weeks go past and the months go past and sometimes the years can go past and you've just got this box of things that you want to sell and you just haven't and you just think of all the money that you could get for it 
but really you're not getting any money from it. It's zero. It's, it's worthless when it's sitting in your house and it's not being used. It's far better to just give it to somebody or donate it or give yourself a timeline of a week or one month maximum to sell it on and if it doesn't sell or if you don't get around to it, just donate it or gift it to somebody else. Number nine is excess of things. This tends to be things like cups and mugs and bowls and plates and forks and knives and spoons and kitchen utensils generally. Keep as many as there are people in the household plus a couple more for guests. You can get rid of the rest. You really don't need an excess of these things. Think of the last time you had a huge gathering round at your house and you needed the 50 plates that you have or the 30 bowls that you have or the 20 forks that you have. If it happens at all, it's probably very rare. So feel free to just keep your favorites and get rid of the rest. Number 10 is expired products. If you have expired products like makeup, skincare, hair care, things like that around, then you're probably not using them. And if you haven't been using them now, you're probably not going to start using them anytime soon. So it's time to just get rid. Number 11 is kitchen electronics that you just don't use. This is things like ice cream makers, waffle irons, deep fat fryers, grills, griddles. If you have things like this lying around, getting greasy in the back of your cupboards or on the top of your shelving units, it's time to let go. Number 12 is glass jars that you don't need. If you're like me and you collect glass jars, from old condiments to reuse and repurpose into something else, then chances are you have quite an abundance of glass jars. Chances are you've got a bag or a box or even a cupboard filled with these glass jars to keep for whenever you need them on hand. But you probably don't need or use all of them, so you can send them to recycling, or even better, take them to your local zero waste shop and they can be used by customers. Number 13 is packaging from items you've purchased that you've kept for just in case you need to return the item. It's time to sort through these and unless you have bought something very recently and kept the packaging, get rid of it. I would also recommend keeping these things for maximum a month. Similarly, number 14 is instruction manuals. Now you probably know how to use everything in your house. If you use it regularly, then you already know how to use it and if you don't, then you might want to consider getting rid of it. Also, now we have the internet. So if you don't know how to use something, you can't find the manual for it, just go online type it in and someone will be there to help you. There are articles, video tutorials, forums, anything. So you don't need to keep the paperwork. Number 15 is DVDs and CDs. Like I said, now we have the internet. You can get music, videos, TV series, all of that for free or on subscription services online and you don't need to have them in their physical form. Number 16 is threadbare, stained or torn bed sheets and pillowcases or even just an excess of these things. You really don't need any more than two, the ones that are on your bed currently, and then when they're in the wash to put the other set on and just cycle it. Number 17 are things that used to be your favorite thing, your old favorites, the things that you keep around because you go, oh, I remember that used to be my absolute favorite. I used to love this t-shirt or I used to love this pair of jeans or these used to be my going out high heels or these used to be my favorite, whatever it is. If they're not your favorite anymore, you don't need to keep a hold of it. Number 18 is borrowed items. If you've borrowed something from a friend this year, it's time to give it back. Number 19 is gifts that you have that you've kept, but you don't actually want them. You're just keeping them just in case that person comes around and asks where it is, which never actually happens. If someone gave you a gift and you don't want it, that's totally fine. If you don't want to have that conversation with them, that's fine too. They probably won't even notice that you don't have it. And if they do notice, you can have that conversation with them and just say, it just wasn't my style and I gifted it to somebody else or whatever you like. But I think it's more important for the person to get to know you and get to know who you are rather than giving you gifts that you don't even want. Um, you can just nip it in the bud and say, that's not really my style. I prefer something like this. And maybe next time they'll give you a gift that you do want. Number 20 is things that collect dust. This tends to be more ornamental items, things that just sit there and literally collect us. If you have items in your house that you tend to have to clean and keep in good nick and to preserve them, but they're not actually serving any function, then think about getting rid of it. Especially if you have a multitude of these things, then they tend to cram up a space and you're not actually being able to appreciate one or two of them. They overcrowd each other and you can't even really see them anymore. If you're the kind of person who likes to have ornaments around, then maybe keep one or two of your favorite things and cherish them and have them in the middle of the mantelpiece or 
in the middle of the wall, the framed, your favourite things that are just there so you can appreciate them rather than being cluttered up by a million different things all the way around. This is going to save you so much time cleaning and you get to really appreciate what you have. So those are 20 things you can get rid of before 2019. I'd love to hear what you guys think, if you have any tips, if you have any things that you're going to be getting rid of, share in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, bye.